Baker Cusco SAT Review is proud to support Scholastic Scrimmage. The series is also made possible by Channel 39 School Services participating districts. WLVT TV presents Scholastic Scrimmage, a weekly program featuring teams from Lehigh Valley High Schools in a contest of quick recall. Tonight's teams are from Penargel High School and Parkland High School. Your host for Scholastic Scrimmage is Harry Price. Good evening and welcome again to Scholastic Scrimmage. We'll meet the teams and the coaches, then we'll begin the contest. From Penargel High School, Kevin Blees is a junior. Tony Sorrell is a junior. The captain, Eric Smith, is a senior. Michael Roth is a senior. And the coach is Agnes Anderson, teacher of mathematics. From Parkland High School, Conrad Chu, a junior. The captain, Todd Garber, is a senior. Keith Schleicher, senior. Tom Johnson, senior. And we have two coaches, Roseanne Heckman, teacher of mathematics, and Kathleen Dimmick, who is the librarian. <laughs> Channel 39 is pleased to announce that at the conclusion of the series, after the June championship contest, the Air Products Foundation will present a $1,500 scholarship award to the championship high school and a $750 award to the runner-up high school. Both of these awards will be given in the names of the two uh, Scholastic Scrimmage teams. Remember, the answers to the questions on Scholastic Scrimmage require rapid recall of factual information and aren't necessarily indicative of academic training. The rules for the contest are as follows. On toss-up questions, you'll be given 10 points for a correct answer. Ten points, however, will be deducted for an incorrect response. If you answer incorrectly, then the opposing team will have an opportunity to answer without penalty. They'll get five points for a correct answer in this situation. Of course, each correct answer to a toss-up question gives you the opportunity to answer a bonus question without penalty. Team members may confer only on the bonus questions, and the answers to these questions should be given to me by the two team captains. A buzzer will signal the end of the contest. If it sounds while a question is being asked, the game stops. The buzzer goes off while you're answering. However, you will be permitted to complete your answer, but no bonus questions will be asked. Are there any questions? None. We'll begin with our first toss-up, and we're preparing for a 10-point bonus. We've all heard of the Taj Mahal. In what city in India? Parkland, Conrad. Agra. Correct. It's in northern India, built by the Shah Jahan. In what city in India is it located? Your bonus, a 10-pointer, Todd. I'm going to name two famous bridges. For five points each, identify the metropolitan areas in which these bridges are located. First one, Queensboro Bridge. New York. Todd? New York. New York City, it's over the East River, correct. Benjamin Franklin Bridge. Philadelphia. Todd? Philadelphia. Over the Delaware is correct also. You've got your ten points on the bonus. Let's try another toss-up. Again, looking at a ten-point bonus. This is a multiple-choice toss-up. I want you to give the definition of multitude, M-U-L-T-I-T-U-D-E, from the following. Does it mean immeasurability, paucity, a great many? It's Penargel, Eric. A great many. It does, large number of persons or things, multitude. Bonus 10-pointer, Eric, for you and the team. The subject is novels of the 20th century. And I'll name the works for five points each. You name the authors. And I'm going to give two books for each of the authors. The first two books... Sons and Lovers and Women in Love. Eric? D.H. Lawrence. Correct. Point, Counterpoint, and Brave New World. Eric? Bradbury? No, it'd be Alice Huxley. Uh, he was an English author, uh, passed away in 1963. Toss-up, going for a 10-point bonus. Name the phylum in the plant kingdom which has organized vascular tissue called phloem and xylem. It would be the tracheophytes or the tracheophyta. Toss-up, going for a 10-point bonus. What's the reciprocal of the square root of the number 149th? Parkland Keith. Seven. Correct. Here's your bonus. Going to be on the monitor. Uh, on the monitor, consider the A, B, and C to be capitals for the points uh, designated there. If the line A, B, C in the diagram is the diameter of a semicircle, 
with center at B, and the smaller arcs are equal semicircles, what's the ratio of the area of the shaded portion to the area of the large semicircle? Judges just missed it by a split second, Todd. Uh, the answer would be one to two. The areas, the ratio of the areas, one to two. In reading lips, I wasn't sure you were going to give that anyhow. We'll go on to our next toss-up, uh, again looking at a ten-point bonus. What's the name of the presidential doctrine implemented following World War II, which states that the United States will come to the rescue of any free country? Parkland, Conrad. Truman Doctrine. Correct. It will come to the rescue of any free country which is fighting communist aggression. And it is called the Truman Doctrine. Bonus 10-pointer, Todd. What philanthropist is largely responsible for the restoration of historic Williamsburg, Virginia? I'd like first and last names on this one. Rockefeller. John D. Rockefeller. Todd. John Rockefeller. You are correct. It's John D. Rockefeller, uh, who in 1927 began that restoration. <clears throat> Toss up. Going for a 10-pointer. Who's the author of the novel Great Expectations? Penarjal Eric. Dickens. Charles Dickens is correct, one of the greatest of the English novelists. Here's your bonus, a 10-pointer. I want you to state the five-letter word beginning with the letter E. Uh, it's a literary term for a sustained and formal poem setting forth the poet's meditations upon death or upon a grave theme. Eric? Elegy. Correct. This is a toss-up. It's a listening toss-up. Listen to the excerpt. <laughs> heard an excerpt from Dance Profane, composed for harp and strings in 1903 by a French Impressionist composer. For ten points, name that composer. Parkland, Conrad. Ravel. Incorrect. Over to Penn Argel. It's a toss-up. Eric. Debussy. Debussy is correct. Claude Debussy. Here's your bonus, a ten-pointer, Eric, for you and the team. I'll name a virtuoso soloist. And for five points apiece, you name his musical instrument. The first one is Arthur, Arthur Rubinstein. Eric? The piano? Correct. Pablo Casals. Eric? The violin? That would be the cello. He was the uh, first uh, musician, really, to become uh, a great solo performer on the cello. Pablo Casals. He got five out of ten. Going for another ten-point bonus. Of what constellation is the star... Beetlejuice, a prominent part. Park from Tom. Orion. Orion, the hunter. And it's a star of the first magnitude. Here's your bonus. Ten-pointer, Todd. It's a physics bonus question. Listen carefully. When a resistor of unknown resistance R is connected in parallel with a resistor of resistance 100 ohms, the overall resistance is 20 ohms. For ten points, find the value of the unknown resistance R. It's 25 ohms, 25 ohms. Going for a 10-point bonus toss-up. What's the name given to the measure of distance in degrees north and south of the equator? Parkland Keith. Latitude. Correct, Keith. Bonus 10-pointer, Todd. To what tribe did Sacagawea, Lewis and Clark's Indian guide, belong? Todd? Sue. Incorrect. It would be the Shoshone. Going for a 10-point bonus toss-up. I want you to correct the following grammatical error, and it occurs in this sentence that I'll give you. The House of Representatives is the most conservative of the two bodies of Congress. Penarjal Eric. Change it to more conservative. Change what to more? Change most to more. Okay, you are correct on that. Here's your bonus, ten-pointer. English has many homophones, Eric, and teen. Distinct words that are pronounced the same way. I'll give definitions of a pair of homophones, and you can earn five points by giving me the common pronunciations of these two words. If you're able to do that, you will earn an additional five points for each of the words you can spell correctly. 
hear the clues. An exclamation of surprise and fright, and it's uh, done with onomatopoeia. Second clue, support a scanty existence bit by bit. very tough. It's very tough. The, the first one is eek, um, uh, which would be spelled E-E-K. The second one, support a scanty existence bit by bit, is also eek, E-K-E, -E, however. Going for a 10-point bonus. Here's your toss-up. For 10 points, what's the latitude of the Arctic Circle? Penargel, Eric? 90. Incorrect. Over to Parkland. Keith? Um, 66. And we'll 66. Okay, we'll accept that. I'm sorry. It's uh, exactly 66 and a half, but we have been, uh, we were going to accept 66 or 67 for that. 66 and a half north, as a matter of fact. Here's your bonus, a 10-pointer. I'm going to describe two biological terms. For five points each, identify these standard terms. A type of tissue that covers organs as well as the body surface. Todd. Dermis? No, I'll not accept that. Uh, epithelium is what I'm looking for. Epithelial tissue. Second part, the egg-laying organ, minsex. Todd? Ovipositor? Correct. That five out of ten. Toss up. Mathematics. Listen carefully again on this mathematical question. A certain rectangle has a length equal to three times its width. Again, its length is equal to three times its width. For 10 points, if the rectangle's perimeter is 32 feet, what's its... Parkland, Keith. Um, four. Correct. What's its width? And its width is four feet. Here's your bonus. It's a mathematical bonus question, and it's going to be on the monitor. And I want you to consider that quadratic equation, x squared minus 6x plus 5 is equal to zero. And for five points each, what are the two roots of the equation? Todd? One and five. Correct. Toss up, going for a ten-pointer. Forty years ago, forty years ago, he wrote the novel, Cry, the Beloved Country, in which he condemned Parkland Conrad. Alan Patton. Correct. He condemned apartheid. Last week he died in Durham, South Africa. I want you to name him. I think it's spelled Patton. It's pronounced Peyton. Alan Peyton, P-A-T-O-N. Here's your bonus for Parkland. In February 1988, Attorney General Edwin Meese's reputation suffered another blow with the disclosure of a memo from Meese, or to Meese, from San Francisco lawyer E. Robert Wallach about a proposed pipeline project. For five points each, identify first the country from which the proposed pipeline would carry oil. Todd? Iraq. Uh, the country in which a political party would receive a monetary payoff according to the Wallach memo. Todd? Israel. You've got both for 10 points. Going for another 10-pointer. Toss up. Who is the French author who won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1957 and wrote The Myth of Sisyphus and the Stranger? Parkland, Tom. Camus. Albert Cam Camus is correct. 10-point bonus. Five points apiece. Identify the native lands of the following authors. The first one, Sidney Lanier. French. French. Todd? France. No, really, USA. Uh, he was a poet and children's story writer. It's kind of tricky. The second one, Thomas Mann. Todd? Germany. Germany is correct. He's certainly one of Germany's greatest novelists. Thomas Mann. Going for a 10-point bonus toss-up. Xerxes the Great was a ruler of what people? Parkland Conrad. Persians. Persians. Uh, he ruled 486 to 465 B.C. Here's your bonus. If the president does not sign a bill within 10 days, excluding Sundays, it's called what type of veto? Todd? Pocket veto. Correct. Going for a 10-pointer. I'll name a Greek deity. And for 10 points, you tell me the Roman counterpart. Artemis. Parkland Keith. Diana. Correct. The goddess of the chase and of the moon. Bonus 10-pointer. I'll name two important philosophical works and indicate when they were written. For five points apiece, you named the philosophers who wrote them. First one, the Apology, about 400 B.C. Um, Socrates? Yeah. 
Todd? Socrates. Correct. A treatise of human nature in 1739. Yeah. Locke. Yeah. Todd? Locke. No, David Hume, a Scottish scholar, uh, and that was one of the first uh, books about psychiatry, first psychiatry books. Going for a 10-point bonus. Here's your toss-up, uh, and it is a multiple choice. From the following, I want you to identify CH3, CH2, and H2. CH3, CH2, NH2. And is it methylamide? Is it acetamide? Is it acetic acid? Or is it ethylamine? Parkland, Todd. D. Ethylamine. D. Ethylamine is correct. Uh, you have the ethyl radical and the amino group NH2 right there. Here's your bonus, a 10 pointer. And it's multiple choice also. Fossils are found almost exclusively in which one of the following? Fossils are found almost exclusively in which one of the following? Would it be igneous rock, metamorphic rock, sedimentary rock, or lava? Sedimentary rock. Todd? Sedimentary rock. Correct. There's going to be on the monitor mathematics. What's the value of that expression? It's one half plus one third divided by one half minus one third. Parkland, Todd? Five. Correct. Bonus, 10-pointer. Again, uh, in math, following a math toss-up. A basketball coach has a 10-man roster in which he has four forwards, two centers, and four guards. For 10 points, how many different combinations of two forwards, a center, and two guards are possible? You can neglect any distinction between right and left forward or between right and left guard. Todd. 24? No, it would be uh, 72. 6 times 2 times 6. Very tough to get that within the allotted time. Going for a 15-point bonus toss-up. Give me the standard geographical name, starting with the letter S, for a grassland consisting of clumps of grass and widely spaced... Penargil, Tony. Savannah. Correct, and widely spaced trees. Uh, the name uh, uh, sounds like a city in Georgia. Uh, which would be Savannah. And by the way, it can be spelled apparently either way with an H on the end. This is the grassland or without. Here's your bonus, 15-pointer Eric. The Ohio River touches six states. Five points each. Name any three of them. Eric. Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Missouri. In fact, I'm going to give you ten. Missouri, it does not uh, touch... You gave me Pennsylvania and Ohio. They are correct. You got 10 points. Kentucky, Illinois, Indiana, and West Virginia would be the others. Going for a 10-point bonus. Toss up. What does the prefix A-N-T-E, anti, mean? Parkland, Tom. Opposite or against? Uh, incorrect. Over to uh, Penargil, Michael. Um, preceding or before? Yes, you are correct. Uh, I said A-N-T-E, Tom. Not A-N-T-I. That's okay. Here we go. Your bonus. Ten-pointer. Five points on the rebound for Penn Argyle. For five points apiece, Eric, give me the plural of the two following words. First word, opus. O-P-U-S. Eric. Opera. Correct. Pelvis. P-E-L-V-I-S. Eric. Pelvic? Incorrect. It would be pelvis. P-E-L-V-E-S. Got five on your bonus. Going for a ten-pointer. Toss-up. In economics, what do we call a general lowering in the prices for goods and services? Penargil, Kevin. Deflation. Correct. A decrease in the amount of currency. Here's your bonus. A ten-pointer for Eric. For ten points, give me the standard term used by social scientists to refer to the process by which people adjust their behavior to conform to socially acceptable standards. Eric. Socializ socialization. Correct, Eric. <laughs> Going for a 10-pointer toss-up. I want you to add up the total number of legs noted in the famous Riddle of the Sphinx. Parkland, Keith. Nine. Correct, Keith. She asked everyone who passed uh, what animal walks on four legs in the morning, two at noon, and three in the evening. 
Oedipus gave her the right answer, man, and the total is nine. Bonus ten. Ten-pointer. These words or names are connected with some particular field of knowledge or activity. I want you to name the fields. Five points apiece, Todd. Ionic and Doric. Todd? Architecture. Correct. They're Roman orders of columns. Adam Smith. Todd? Economics. 18th century Scotch economist. He wrote uh, Wealth of Nations, uh, the first full-length work uh, on political economy. Correct. Going for a 10-point bonus. Toss up visual. The work being shown on your monitor shows the Forbidden City, which is a city within a city. For 10 points, identify the city where this courtyard. Parkland, Conrad. Beijing, China. You are correct. It's Beijing, China, Beijing, uh, etc. And you gave me the correct pronunciation. Uh, and I wanted to know where it was located, what city. Bonus 10-pointer. Most musical instruments can be classified as belonging to one of four groups. Brasses, strings, woodwinds, and percussion. I'll name two instruments. For five points each, identify the groups to which they belong. The vibraphone. Percussion. Todd? Percussion. Yeah, it's a marimba used by jazz band Lionel Hampton. Sousaphone. Todd? Brass. Correct. It's a type of tuba. Going for a 10-point bonus toss-up. For 10 points, name the country in which most of the Afghans who fled the fighting in their country have taken refuge. Parkland, Keith. Pakistan. It's a friendly neighbor. Correct. Bonus 10-pointer, Todd. I'm going to name two European monarchs this time, and for five points each, name the countries in which these monarchs presently reign. First one, King Olaf V. Todd? Norway. Correct, since 1957. Second one, Queen Beatrix. Holland, Netherlands. Holland. Todd? The Netherlands. Since 1980 is correct also. Going for a 10-point bonus, toss-up. The Pearl is a short novel about an evidently valuable discovery that brings nothing but trouble. For 10 points, name the American... Pearl S. Buck. Pe Sorry. Penarge will be Michael. You said Pearl S. Buck. It's incorrect. I'm going to go over to Parkland. I have not quite finished it. The Pearl is a short novel about an evidently valuable discovery that brings nothing but trouble. For 10 points, name the American author who wrote The Pearl. Conrad? John Steinbeck. John Steinbeck. Uh, first published, 1945. Read that. It's uh, an interesting, s tragic story, but it's interesting. Here's your bonus, 10-pointer. It's for Parkland. In what book by John Steinbeck do the characters George and Lenny appear? Oh, Todd? Of Mice and Men. George Milton Lenny Small. Another tragic story. Going for a 10-point bonus. Bonus, here's your toss-up. It's a physical science toss-up question. And again, listen carefully. Consider a rock that has a mass of 1,000 grams, a diameter of 7 centimeters, and a volume of 250 cubic centimeters. I want you to give me the density of the rock. Parkland Keith. Four grams per cubic centimeter. You are correct. All you have to do is divide the mass by the volume. I guess they threw the seven in to throw you off. Bonus ten pointer. Name the states in which the following scientific facilities are located. First one, the National Accelerator Laboratory, also known as Fermi Lab. Todd? Arizona? That would be in Illinois. It's near Chicago, funded by the U.S. Department of Energy. Lawrence Livermore Laboratory. Todd? New York? No, it's California. Uh, oh, well. I think that's the University of California, Berkeley. Going for a 10-point bonus on the monitor. I want you to simplify square root of 96 plus the square root of 54 and tell me what it equals. Parkland, Todd. Seven times the square root of six? Correct, Todd. Here's your bonus, a ten-pointer. Again, listen carefully. It's a mathematical bonus question. Each edge of an equilateral triangle is one foot long. Find the area of the triangle in square feet. Todd. The square root of three divided by four? Correct. Going for a ten-point bonus. 
That is correct. Uh, going for a 10-point bonus. Toss-up. What nation opposed the Greeks in the Battle of Marathon in 490 B.C.? Park and Tom. Persia. Persia is correct. Bonus. There are many ships that are famous in world history. I'll describe one such ship. And for 10 points, I want you to name the ship. Of the five ships in Magellan's fleet, this is the only one that completed the first circumnavigation of the globe. Todd? The Golden Hind. The Golden Hind, no. It would be, um, that was Drake, I think. This is uh, the Victoria. It was captained by Juan Sebastian de Cano because Magellan had been killed earlier on. Uh, that's the final buzzer. And the final score is 295 for Parkland High School and 85 for Canardra. Penarjul, Eric, uh, you've been on a few years now. You've done an outstanding job, Eric. We want to wish you and Michael all success in college. Tony and Kevin, we'll see you back here again next year. Parkland, congratulations. You're going on into the semi semifinals, and uh, you're going to be against one of the two teams, which will appear next week. And the two teams are from Lehighton High School. That's Lehighton High School and Salisbury High School. This is Harry Price. Thank you for being with us, and good night. Scholastic Scrimmage is provided by the Air Products Foundation. The foundation is supported by donations from Air Products and Chemicals Incorporated as a charitable organization whose contributions provide support for educational, cultural, health, and community programs in the Lehigh Valley. The key to success is education and shoemaker Cusco, SAT Review, a leader in test preparation, helps open the doors to the future. Shoemaker Cusco, SAT Review, is proud to support Scholastic Scrimmage. The series is also made possible by Channel 39 School Services participating districts. When spring comes to the coastal bend of Texas, it finds a rich diversity of migratory birds designated in the 30s as a refuge for the endangered whooping crane. Watch Arkansas National Wildlife Refuge on Nature Scene, Sunday at 7.30. Skelton presents a program featuring some of today's greatest masters of silent acting. Watch them on Great Performers, Saturday at 10. This part of Channel 39's broadcast day is brought to you by Grants. From Lehigh Valley Bank, a leader in residential mortgage lending as well as home improvement loans and home equity lines of credit. All Lehigh Valley offices have complete information on residential mortgages or any bank product or service. At Lehigh Valley Bank, our name says it all. From Hamilton Abstract Company, a full-service title insurance agency, representing you in the purchase of new homes, construction loans, and refinancing of residential and commercial real estate. Hamilton Abstract Company, two convenient locations in Allentown and Bethlehem. From Lehigh Portland Cement Company, for 90 years of part of the Lehigh Valley community. Lehigh is headquartered in Allentown and operates 11 plants, 22 terminals, and 10 offices nationwide, offering a complete range of high-quality cement products, lightweight aggregate, and furniture. The company, in supporting public television, helps to build a solid future for the Lehigh Valley. From the Pennsylvania Power and Light Company, sponsors of the four-star home, designed for comfort and savings, PPNL provides residential consultants who can help you plan a total comfort package with a variety of energy-efficient heating and and cooling options. Programming is also made possible through Channel 39 subscribing memberships.